a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the keeping of his holy word. Amen. I believe that Dr. D is on the line. Would you like to have a word, Dr. D? So we have a dynamic ministry. She has her own ministry, gifted, anointed, and so God is using her in so many ways. And she has graciously consented to come and and bring the word. And I want us to just just get ready for our speaker this morning is none other than Dr. Pat Love uh, has her own ministry and dynamic woman of God. God bless you. Thank you very much, Dr. D. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, which means he doesn't chew you out for asking for help. And it shall be given him. Now, what I want to ask you real quick before I go any further is when you're going through, when life starts beating down, pelting down, uh, uh, drumming down on top of your head, what is your reaction? What is your initial reaction? Because one of the things I have found, just to kind of give you a little highlight from the, the, the brass tacks of real life, Sometimes I have found that when, I mean, my husband brought it to my attention. When I'm worried about something, if I'm uh, anxious about the finances, if I'm worried about getting my, my lease payment in for my salon, this is way back, about 10 years ago, what would happen is I would find my temperament getting short. And thank God, my husband and I didn't take our frustrations out on each other, but we would take our frustrations out on other things. I would grab my keys. I would be rough with whatever I was doing, but the attitude was there. And what he brought to my attention is when I am upset like that, it's usually because I'm worried about something. And sometimes when we ask God, Lord, what's wrong with me? Why am I tripping? God will let you know. If you really want to know the answer, God will let you know. Um, sometimes life can overwhelm you. Some of you are caregivers. Some of you take care of a lot of responsibility. Maybe you wear a lot of hats. Maybe you are multitasking almost every day of your life. And that in and of itself can become very stressful. Not to mention all the bad news coming in from outside. So what's going on a lot of times is our nerves get frayed. And we don't realize how quickly we fall back into old ways, old attitudes, old frame of minds, old reactions. Some may even still blurt out a cuss word or two. Some may ball somebody out or snap at somebody. Some may throw things down and have hissy fits, adult temper tantrums. But the bottom line is that shows you right there. There's something brewing under the surface. And it's usually a storm that's brewing because you're, you're concerned about things going on in the world. You're concerned about things going on in your personal life. So it shows itself. Just like if you have a cold, your body shows it by you breaking out in profuse sweats or you having a high temperature or your nose is stopped up. Symptoms of things that have gone awry show above the surface when stress moves in. And when stress moves in, we find ourselves reacting in a way that we have to apologize for. We find ourselves saying things and doing things that we have to apologize for. We have to ask God 
for his forgiveness. We have to ask people for their forgiveness. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But the bottom line is, we can sometimes be moved by every wind of doctrine, by every storm that blows in and blows out, by everything that's going on around us. We can be so easily affected. But there's a scripture that says, he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Uh, some of you are struggling. You're struggling trying to walk the straight and narrow because your flesh is constantly flaring up or because temptation is always knocking at your door, ringing your doorbell, pulling your chain, whatever. But the bottom line is the place to go when you feel your weakest, the place to go when you're at your wit's end is God. Why? Because God is. He is everything you need at every given moment. He is all, all inclusive. There is nothing he can't do for you. There is nothing he can't fix for you. There is nothing he can't iron out. No problem he cannot solve. He is all that and a million bag of chips. Just let me put it in a colloquial term so you get what I'm saying. God is. And he is your answer, no matter what your quandary is, no matter what your problem is, no matter what your challenge is, no matter what your fears are based on, God is. All right, so what I want you to understand is no matter what, there are going to there are gonna be times in your life when things come across the news that rattle your cage. Things happen in your personal life that rattle your case. Somebody may come up in your present that was supposed to stay in your past. <laughs> and that may rattle your cage. So let me read on because I want to continue with this. Let's start at verse six. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You notice how some people can't make up their mind. They're, one minute they're going to do this, the next minute they're going to do that, the next minute they're not going to do anything. They're just, they fluctuate, they're fickle, they're unstable, you can't depend on them, they're un, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy how that happens, but that's a symptom of things. And a lot of times the underlying core is fear. Some people are afraid of success. Some people are afraid of failure. Doesn't matter, they're afraid. Fear is fear. And it comes in a lot of different ways. Let's move on because I want to get the scripture in. Nine. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Okay, let's move down to 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried he shall receive a crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Listen, life, pressure, stress, obstacles, delays, setbacks, attacks, false accusations will cause you to want to take your hands off the driver's seat and let the car go wherever it will because you're ready to drive off the edge of this planet and call it a day. But listen, you cannot give up. You cannot relinquish your faith. You cannot toss it in the trash. You cannot be weary in well-doing. Why? In due season, you will reap if you faint not. So a lot of times, life will cause you to want to quit. A lot of times, people will discourage you. You can become disheartened by all the 
things that are going on and you're saying, okay, Lord, are you telling me to pack up my bags and go home? What are you telling me to do? But the thing that we have to remember is there's a pelting process. There's a hammering process. There's a beating process. And yes, it gets old. It gets old and it gets tiring. And you get to the point where you come to the edge of your rope. There's an old expression, an old church adage. When you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Because God is never late. Remember that. God is never late. He's always on time. And it's always, this is another adage, darkest before dawn. If you look at, this is an analogy. If you look at a shadow on a bright, 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 sunny day, now the, the God's light might be shining on you big time. I mean, bright, bright, bright. But you let a shadow come into the, into the picture. What happens? That shadow is dark. To the same extent the day is bright, the shadow is dark and has got a hard edge to it. Why? Because of the brightness, the direct sunlight beaming down. Well, when you look at that shadow, if you take a closer look, the point right before the shadow ends and the light is on the edge of it, getting ready to light up that whole area around the shadow, the peripheral area of that shadow that's right up against that light, guess what? It's the darkest part. It's the darkest. If you have gone through your life and you have gone through some of the darkest periods, you have gone through some of the scariest avenues, things just seem to be piling up and you're wondering, what's it all about, Alfie? What is going on? Am I paying for a sin? What is this? Understand that God has risen and he's shining his light on you. And it may feel because you're on the edge of that shadow, like it's so dark you feel like you're practically blinded by the darkness because you don't have a clue. You can't get your bearings. But guess what? God is saying, ah, ah, ah. And I'm going to read the verse that's coming to my mind right now. Go to Hebrew chapter 11. Hebrew chapter 11 says in verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you have to remember, God is not playing hide and seek. He's not, he's not jerking you around. But there comes that period of seeking, knocking, and asking. And if you look at the night, the night season, let's say it's 11 o'clock at night. It's dark at 11 o'clock at night, isn't it? The moon might not even be showing that much. You might only have that little, that little, uh, outline of the moon. It might be at its darkest point. So you, the very little light to help you navigate your way through life. But check it out. When it's dark in the middle of the night, do you know that's where seeds are germinating? That's where the insects are feeding. That's when things are happening under the soil. We can't see it because we're seeing it from the surface. But we don't understand there are things that are happening in nature that God is performing for the sake of the plant life, for the sake of the oxygen in the air. Things are happening. Germination is taking place. Seedlings are sprouting. We don't see that because it's under the surface. But let me tell you this, baby. There's an old uh, a message I preached years ago. Some people have to come through the dirt. Why do some people have to come through the dirt? Because when you look at the food that is germinated in the dirt, 
Look at watermelon. Look at potatoes, onions, radishes, carrots. So many things that you have to pull out from the dirt in order to partake. They're nutritious. They're delicious to some, depending on your taste. But the bottom line is, the Bible says the body, that's the body of Christ, is meat indeed, M-E-A-T. And what happens is we don't realize that the more dirt we have to go through, the more nutritious we become to the body of Christ. So when people hurt your feelings, when people rise up against you, when people challenge you, when people snap at you and bawl you out, when people talk about you behind your back, when people backstab you, when people do all kind of crazy stuff and you wonder, what did I do? Guess what? It's all in the process. Don't even worry about it. Just know that it's all in God's hands. And God will not allow you to go through anything you can't handle. Know that. He's not going to allow you to be tempted above that you're able. So understand that God is in it, working. There's a, uh, years ago, the Lord had laid on my heart a uh, time when I was having my driveway. And this is all part of this message. So don't think I, I'm having a senior moment and I'm in, in a la-la land somewhere. The Lord showed me while I was in the pulpit the memory of the process of laying pavers. The first thing they had to do, think of this now, think of this when you feel like life is pounding down on you. The first thing they had to do was break up the fallow ground. They had to break up the old driveway, all the gravel, all the boulders, remove them from the scene. There's nothing there now but dirt. And then, can someone please mute your mic? We're hearing noises. Thank you. And then what ends up happening is you have the dirt sitting there and the guy pulls out the pounder the, I forget, compactor, that's the word, compactor. That compactor serves a tremendous purpose and that's what ends up happening in your life. People come against you, compactor. People tell lies on you, compactor. People abandon you, compactor. People backstab you, compactor. All kind of things happen in life. Things are delayed, things are denial, things are changed, things are canceled, compactor, because God is equipping you and listen to what happened to the driveway. And this is what's going to happen to you. In the driveway, the guy pulls out the compactor. It sprays out a mist of a soft shower of water. While the thing is going... Bah, 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 that is the most annoying sound. And you just want it to shut up. But it's so necessary. Because if you don't have all that pounding process and you go to park your car on that soft driveway, it could create a sinkhole. It has to be able to bear up under the weight, under the load that it is designed to carry. And you have no idea what God has designed you to carry. You have no idea the responsibilities and the exploits God has in store for you. So here comes life pounding down on top of your head like the pavers. Now, after they get through beaten down on that soil, then they come back in and they start mapping out the pavers, how they're going to lay out. And then they lay them out. Now it looks like the job is done. The driveway looks beautiful. The pathway to the door looks gorgeous. But they're not done. They have to pull that stupid pounder back out. And they got bah, 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 all day long you hearing that noise. It's nerve wracking. Just like life. But what ends up happening after they pound? Then they have to go back in and they have to sweep in all of this sand and, and whatever that stuff is that, that blocks them in and solidifies them right up against each other and fills in all the gaps. 
Then here comes the pounder again, and they're spraying, and then bam, 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 bam. You know what? Sometimes it looks like it's never going to end. It looks like you're a finished product. Why can't you just move on to this or move on to that? Because God is saying you're not ready yet. There are a few more things I have to tweak in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind, and in your body. And I have to prepare you for what's coming. Because what's coming is a tremendous blessing. What's coming is something that's going to put a smile on my face. And it's going to make you feel like you have received so much honor from me. Because promotion comes from God. Not from anybody else. From God. And your promotion is on its way. But you don't see it because you're focusing on that pounder, on that compactor, and you're sick and tired of it. See, life can get you to the point. If you're not focused on God, life can get you to the point where you throw in the towel, walk away, and say, I'm done. Forget it. This is ridiculous. What's the point? What's the use? There is a use and there is a point because God is not done. Do you hear me? What God has begun, God will complete. He who began a good work in you will perform it. He is not short-handed. His arms aren't weak. He's not forgetful. He doesn't have Alzheimer's. He's not on vacation while you're screaming your guts out. No. He's right there in it. He's in the trenches with you. Emmanuel, God with us. So know that no matter what, you have the paraclete. You have your advocate. He is right there alongside and he has not forgotten your labor of love. And yes, sometimes it feels like labor pains when you're putting out, you're pouring out, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving of yourself. You're pouring into people and they slap you in the face. You bless them and they bite the hand that feeds them. You hear me? You put your arms around them and they stab you in your back while in your embraces. But God knows. God knows. And as long as God is for you, you have to remind yourself, okay, so who can be against me? God is for me, not against me. He's for you. And that's what you have to keep in mind. The one that's on your side is in total control. You hear me? He is able to get you there. He will equip you. He will sustain you. He will strengthen you on the inner man. Now, some of you are worried about all the stuff going on in the news. You're worried about all this madness. But you are not subjected to the elements of the world. Because God is your refuge. God is your fortress. God is your deliverer. God is your healer. God is your sustainer, your provider. He will keep you. All right. Psalms 91, go there with me. And then I think we're going to be closing. But let's see. We'll see what the Lord says. Psalms 91. I didn't have it in my notes, so we got to go to it raw. All right. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust, not in the president, not in the powers that be, not in the government, not in the system, not in my money, not in my honey. 
3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. I always say, get up under his armpits, y'all. That's as close as you can get. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Turn the news off, y'all. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Turn the radio off. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Get out from the magazines reading all that mess. Nor from the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Let me show you what that kind of means. Years ago, the Lord gave me a dream about a tsunami coming in. And it was a big one. And I remembered it caused water to rush through the streets. And I was standing there watching the water rush around the, the corner of the street while I'm standing on a ramp of a building. And while I'm standing there, the water gushes up high and flops over my head. Big old body of water. Not one drop fell on me. Then I was told, go inside. So I go inside the building. Everybody in the building, born again Christians, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm safe. Then they say there's something coming. Everybody closed the doors, locked the windows. See, when God sees something coming, he's gonna warn his people. He's not gonna let you get caught out there un unworn, un unknowingly. I mean, you're just in oblivion. No, God is gonna cover you. He's gonna protect you. What the Lord showed me is no matter what comes, no matter what happens, I will keep you in a safe haven. I will protect you. My love has got you covered. All right, let's keep reading. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. We read that. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the, wicked, of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread. Now here's the part where a lot of us, we don't tread. You hear me? We don't trample because we're afraid. A lot of us are afraid of the lion and the adder, the young lion, the dragon. Those are demonic entities. Those are attacks in life. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. That's spiritual warfare, y'all. Some of you are laying down just playing dead while the enemy is literally raping your life and you don't fight him. You don't put up a resistance. Why? You're intimidated. Why? God is. You don't have to be intimidated by a demon. You don't have to be intimidated by the devil or anything he can pull out. Why? Because God is moving right along. 14. Because he has set his love upon me, this is God talking now. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Do you know the power of the name of Jesus? Do you know the authority you have when your heart is acting up and you feel a pain in your upper left arm? Like I have many a times. Rebuke heart attack. No, I will not have a heart attack. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. When the left side or the right side of your face is going numb and the room is spinning, I rebuke stroke in the name of Jesus. How many things can you stop if you take authority? All right, 15. He shall, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. You're not going through it by yourself. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I love that, show him my salvation. You're already getting long life, but then he's going to show, demonstrate. 
Every day, minute by minute, second by second, hour by hour, week by week, he's demonstrating his power in your life. He's showing you what a God he really is. But are you asking? Are you seeking? Are you knocking? Are you digging? Are you pulling on him? Are you leaning on him with all your might? Or are you leaning to your own understanding? Are you acknowledging him in all your ways or are you having it your way? Are you making a bad situation a mess? Are you creating a disaster out of a simple trial? That's where we have to line ourselves up with the word of God. Some of us don't read the word enough to know all that we can do in a situation. Some of us don't realize the dominion, the power, the authority God gave us over circumstances. I remember watching a video on YouTube where these Filipinos were, they showed two tornadoes touching down together. And they ran out their church and started commanding those tornadoes to go back. They were some speaking in their language and some speaking in ours, but they were telling that tornado to go back. They took authority. And guess what? One went up while the other one was moving in. And before you knew it, that one went up. And there was no tornado anywhere to be found because they took authority. How much authority are you willing to take? How much faith do you have? See, when the Bible says you, he, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you diligently seek him? Or is it a passive, casual approach? Do you knock and keep on knocking? Do you ask and keep on asking? Do you seek and keep on seeking like the woman who was fighting and, and dragging her way through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment? If I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. I'll be made whole. What are you doing to get a hold of God? It takes effort. Yes, it does. It's not by works to be saved. But it is, a, there's a lot of work involved in getting a hold of him. Are you willing to do what it takes to experience him in your living room, in your car, to have him show up in your life in a supernatural way where you feel like heaven is, in, is right there in front of you? How many of you have yet to experience God in any way shape or form. And I'm not talking about goosebumps. You have to seek him in the secret place of the most high. You have to pursue him. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Show me who you really are. Manifest your love. Manifest your power to me. I want you to be real, not just an object of my faith. I want to know in whom I believe. Because see, when you know it, it shows in your life when you go through it. You're not fought so quick to fall back on the old man's ways. Because you know in whom you believe. And when you know in whom you believe, you don't want to disappoint him. It's not about not going to hell. It's about relationship. And the closer your relationship is, no matter what comes at you, the easier it is to go through it. Believe me when I say that. So I, I beg you now, consider the scriptures we have read and ask God to draw you close to his bosom to help you hear his heartbeat, help you understand what matters to him more than what matters to you. Help you prioritize and put him on the throne and get your own wits and your own ideas and your own feelings off the throne. Because when you put him first, baby, miracles will happen way more often in your life than when you put you first. Don't lean to your own understanding. 
but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. When, when, when Jesus says thou shalt be saved, saving is not just being forgiven for sin. Every day of your life, you're being saved, you're being protected, you're being guarded, you're being kept because of his love for you and your faith in him. Lean on him with all your might, y'all. God is worthy to be praised. And as the old folks say, he is due to trust. Trust him. Trust him with all your heart. Trust him with everything. Whether he says yes, whether he says no, whether he says not yet, whether he says wait, whether he says be still, and you still don't have an answer, trust him. Because he's got the answer, even if you don't. Amen. God bless you. Be at peace. He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. God bless you. And remember, God is. Amen.